Voting Act. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I call Erica Stanford. Oh, I need this. Um, I'm pleased to take a call on this bill. Um, Madam Chair, I'd like to take a slightly different tack. Um, part one clearly is, a, is substantive, substantive provisions of the bill, who can apply for a permit and where. Uh, and the submitters that we heard from in Select Committee spoke quite clearly uh, and in unison around the process uh, and the lack of time that they had to submit and the lack of time they had in Select Committee to uh, give their, uh, their views around this part one. I'd like to speak about one of those in particular, which I found quite concerning. Uh, and I want to hear from the minister in the chair about what she thinks of the process and whether or not we need perhaps to go back to select committee. There was a, a gentleman that came to speak to us by the name of Paul Rishworth, chairman of the Legislative Design and Advisory Committee, the body responsible for advising parliament on policy and legislation. He raised serious issues with the bill uh, and the process that we, uh, sorry, the bill's process. And in a submission, uh, he said that the submission process around part one was inadequate and further said that there is, no, uh, there is no suggestion that an extra week or two in the legislative process or in the select committee process would have had a major adverse effect. So my question really is to the minister, uh, why wasn't it considered that there was an extra couple of weeks available to us to hear from more submitters and to hear uh, for a longer period of time for submitters around this substantive part of the bill. The submission from Paul referenced uh, Treasury's analysis of the bill, which said, due to the time limitations and analytical constraints arising from Cabinet's previous decisions, MB did not consult the petroleum industry and the public on the proposals. His submission pointed out that this showed the limitation and constraints of having such a short consulting period. And we saw this in submissions from others, many others, who complained of a lack of time to prepare and the very short time that we allowed on Select Committee for them to be able to present either five minutes or 15. And it, frankly, it was embarrassing, I felt, and members uh, this side felt, who sat in on that process, to be hearing from CEOs of major companies and major industry bodies uh, only have 15 minutes to present and to answer questions and to be cut off at the last second uh, was frankly embarrassing. The minister was quoted in the media as saying that uh, there were a couple of thousand submissions and therefore the short time frame was fine and that those who wanted to have a say got to have a say. I think, and she, I was quoted, she was quoted in the Herald as saying, this is something that we announced in April. The prime minister and I have been meeting with communities and the industry since April and have been having discussions about it. Well, this flies in the face of what submitters told us in Select Committee, where they said that there wasn't enough time, that there were a lot of people that they knew of that didn't have time to submit, that because we didn't go to Taranaki, that there were people in Taranaki, businesses and individuals, uh, who didn't get to have their say, and that the submission pros the time they had to make their submission was far too short. PowerCo said in their submission, that the government did not consult with stakeholders prior to making its announcement on the 12th of April, nor has it consulted on the development of the bill, despite what the minister said. The bill was placed into urgency, which means the select committee process has not allowed for meaningful consultation with the affected industry or the public. That's what PowerCo said. So there were a number of industry organisations and businesses and submitters who felt that they hadn't been cons uh, consulted despite the minister's claims. So I'd like to ask the Minister whether or not she feels that this process has been fair to the industry and to the people of Taranaki, given that we didn't go there, given that we only gave them two weeks uh, to take a look at the bill and to make submissions, and the fact that we only gave them five or 15 minutes in the Select Committee, and given that the overwhelming feeling of all of the submitters against the bill was that the process was flawed and was undemocratic. One of the things that the Prime Minister and the Minister have said is that they rushed this process because of the block offer, and I'd like the Minister in the Chair to advise us whether or not she had had representations from the industry and the industry bodies to say that they actually didn't mind if that block offer was put off in order 
for the select committee process to uh, be pushed out. Ma Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I'll call Erica Stanford. Thank you. Um, because what we heard from many of the industry organisations was, in fact, that they didn't mind that the 2018 block offer was, in fact, pushed out. And in fact, we learned that the 2018 block offer wasn't even going to happen in 2018. In fact, it's not happening until next year. So the question for the minister and the chair is why the rush? We didn't need to have these submitters, all of these submitters complaining about this undemocratic process and the shortened timeframes, because in the end, the block offer isn't happening until next year and the industry are more than happy for that to be pushed out. And I would like to ask the minister and the chair, why the rush? Why did we need to be in this situation having CEOs of companies being cut off at, to the second by the chair in, a, in an, a, an embarrassing and appalling manner when there was no need for this rush, when there was no need for urgency. Um, that was made quite clear by the industry bodies who came to talk to us that they were more than happy to have that uh, pushed out. Furthermore, I would like to ask the minister and the chair, we know that advice wasn't gained by the minister prior to the announcement. We know that the uh, regulatory impact statement came after the announcement. We know that there's been no cost-benefit analysis. We know that uh, there hasn't been uh, a lot of consultation done in Taranaki. I'd like to ask the minister and the chair whether or not she thinks that this process has been a good, thorough, democratic process and whether or not she thinks that, in fact, the government and the sorry the minister needs to in fact get far more information around the lack of investment that's going to be happening in Taranaki, the loss of jobs, carbon leakage. We asked that question in select committee about carbon leakage, about what would happen when we would be in fact importing more oil and gas from overseas from countries who frankly don't have the environmental standards that we have in this country, and what that would mean to global emissions. Because one of the things brought up by the submitters. Uh, was the fact that, although this sounds nice, the effect in reality is that global emissions are likely to rise from this policy. And that was actually made clear uh, from MB as well, because it's not doing anything for, with demand. And that was something that came through quite clearly in the submissions as well. And I'd like the minister to, to actually talk to us today about what is going to happen with demand, um, because she said quite a lot about the reduction in global emissions from this bill, but in fact the advice has been to the contrary. And with the uptick of petrol tankers and the uptick of importation of gas to, natural gas to this country, it is most likely that global emissions will rise, and that's what carbon leakage is all about. Just because we stop producing it here, it's got to be produced somewhere else, and the likelihood is that global emissions will rise because of that. So there are a number of questions for the Minister mostly around process and whether or not she thinks that, in fact, because of the thousands of people that we didn't get to talk to and that didn't get to submit in Taranaki, haven't had their say, should we go back to select committee? Secondly, should the minister have, uh, or should the minister now get a lot more information, especially around carbon leakage, because we asked that question and it hasn't, hasn't been forthcoming? And has, is she going to get more of a cost-benefit benefit analysis? And does she have information around the potential job losses uh, and lack of investment in the Taranaki region? Because we have yet to see that information. We've been asking uh, and we haven't seen it. It's all been nice words and virtue signalling and fluffery, but what we're asking are for the details. We're talking about a, a huge region, thousands of jobs, highly skilled, highly paid jobs, uh, and a bill that is, in fact, most likely going to have the opposite effect of its intent. And I would be uh, keen to hear the Minister's answers to those questions, and uh, I will be back for more shortly. Thank you. I call the Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to speak.